In this video, we will create a flowchart for the given problem statement. That is, you are given a single non-negative integer n. You need to find out whether n is a part of the Fibonacci sequence. Print yes if it is, print no if it's not. As we know, the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence in which each number is the sum of two preceding ones, where 0 and 1 are the initials. Now let's consider an example. Let n is equals to 5. As the Fibonacci sequence start with 0 and 1 and then sums up two preceding elements. That is 0, 1. Now 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8 and so on. Here, since n is equals to 5 and 5 is a part of the Fibonacci series, hence our program should print yes. So now, let's dive to construct a flowchart. Initially, let's create a starting terminator to indicate the beginning of the program. Now, accept an integer from the user and store it in variable n using an input component. Furthermore, a process box is added in which two variables are declared and assigned with 0 and 1. Let's consider a is equals to 0 and b is equals to 1. Now, a decision box is implemented to check whether n is equals to 0 or not. If the condition is true, then print yes through an output component and terminate the program via end terminator. But if n is not equals to 0, then again add a decision box to check if a is less than n or not. If a is not less than n, that means the integer n is not a part of Fibonacci sequence. And hence, we will print no using an output component and terminate the program. But if a is less than n, then we will add a process box, create a new variable and assign summation of a and b to it. Let's say fb is equals to a plus b. Moreover, we will again implement a decision box to determine whether fb is equals to n or not. If fb is equals to n, that means n is present in the Fibonacci sequence. And hence, we will print yes using an output component and end the program. But if fb is not equals to n, then we will add a process box and assign the value of variable b to a and the value of variable fb to b. And finally, a loop is added before the second decision box such that the decision box will verify whether a is less than n for each iteration. As soon as the value of a becomes equal to or greater than n, then our program will print no and terminates. Now let's dry run the program by considering n is equal to 2. At first, variable a will be assigned to 0 and variable b to 1. Now, as 2 is not equal to 0, the condition in the first decision box is false. Here, since a which is 0 is less than 2, thus the condition in the second decision box is true. As a result, the variable fb will be a plus b that is 0 plus 1 which is 1. Moreover, as 1 is not equal to n that is 2, thus the condition in the last decision box is false. Therefore, a is changed to 1 and b remains 1. Now again, the second decision box will check whether a is less than n or not. In our case, as 1 is less than 2, Thus, the condition in the second decision box is true. Hence, fb will be 1 plus 1 that is 2. Furthermore, as fb which is 2 is equal to n which is also 2. Thus, the condition in the last decision box is true. As a result, our program will print yes and terminates. Thank you.